Michael, what were the design challenges in the Outback? Well, typically, everybody wants cheap, fast, and light, which are not, the three of them together are not compatible. We always tell everybody, man, any two you want, which can't have all three. So the challenge was actually getting all three of them to work together. And they're all hooked together because in order to get the boat to be efficient, we have to make it light. But light usually raises all of the antennas about high cost. So the way we achieved it with this boat was that we actually just did it by using standard laminates, not high-tech uh, composites that would have absolutely killed the cost of the boat. But we kept it by keeping the boat, you know, narrow beam, simple, simple construction. Uh, and it's enough by keeping the mechanical parts of it simple. And if you sort of do this reverse snowball, you can get the weight out by simply not making the boat overly complex. Now, the, the problem of going through the hump is, you know, what you ideally want is, you know, a boat that's going to be able to go through the speed range without experiencing much of a hump. That's when you feel a boat go from displacement speed through what actually feels like a hump and it falls off and then begins to plane. Well, that region right in there not only feels like a hump, we call it a hump. And what you really want is what we were able to achieve on the Outback, and that is a boat that looks like at 10 knots, looks the same at 20 knots. And you can see the wave pattern is almost identical between them. But the hump is actually beginning to happen in this range. And what we're trying to avoid is the boat rising its bow a lot, digging its stern in, and causing a lot of resistance. If you actually look at the resistance curve, this, on a, on a typical power boat, there would actually be a pronounced hump right here. And it is, the hump is exactly what you feel when you feel in the boat. And ideally what you want is an absolutely straight line from displacement speed all the way up through top speed. So we were very close to achieving a straight line here. We did that by having narrow beam and light displacement. And what that does is it allows it to, to slip right through that region and not climb up on the big wave that it does uh, for a typical planing boat. And this is critical to getting the boat to where you can cruise right in this range, which is typically the, you know, in this 15 to 20 knot range is where people want to cruise, and that's right where most boats die. Mm -hmm. The only boats that can cruise in that range efficiently are typically much longer, 150, 200 foot boats. But in a short boat, it's really hard to achieve that. We're able to do it by keeping it light and narrow.